Now, in the news today, Ken Clark has told an inquiry he was, quote, not responsible for blood products during his time as health minister. About 3,000 people died after being given blood products, a, a clotting agent called Factor VIII containing HIV and hepatitis C back in the 1970s and 1980s. And Lord Clark, who was Conservative Health Minister from 1982 to 85 and Health Secretary between 1988 and 1990, is the first senior health minister from the time to testify during the inquiry into the scandal. But he said the emerging controversy, quote, hardly ever came across my desk. Steve Diamond from Thanet died in 2018 from the treatment he was given. His wife, Sue Gorman, is on the line to us now. Sue, can you remind us how Steve fell ill and why he became a campaigner before he died? Uh, Steve was born a haemophiliac but wasn't diagnosed till he was 12. Um, But he was a mild haemophiliac, which meant he needed very little treatment. And a couple of times he went along to a hospital as a precautionary measure because he'd got a bruise. And on both occasions they said, oh, we've got this new wonder drug. This will clear it up. And without consulting him, without telling him what it was or what the risks were, because there were, was already suspicion about the risks of hepatitis C and HIV in the blood products. Um, they just injected him and we waited. He was first infected in 76. We weren't told he'd got hepatitis C until 1997, even though he'd had lots of the symptoms, which we didn't know what it was. And he finally got um, cleared of hepatitis C in 2015 with the new treatments, Um, but died because basically his body was so badly damaged that it never recovered from what had been done to it by the virus. And he became a campaigner because there was so much wrong in the way that the victims um, were treated, the victim families were treated by the people who had done this to them, by the state, something Steve was very strong about. It was the state which was supposed to protect you, which had actually destroyed your life. And we lived abroad for a long time. We came back and found this horrible attitude of disdain, almost contempt from the Department of Health towards the victims. And we joined in the fight to get ourselves recognised to get the scandal out from under the carpets. I understand you've been watching Sue Lord Clark's testimony virtually. What, what did you make of him saying he was, quote, not responsible for blood products during his time as health minister? Well, I've, I've heard that before. None of what he said today surprised me particularly because I've heard that before. And in one case, he actually said he'd been too senior but too junior to have had anything to do with it. Um, I find it very, very difficult because ultimately there is the um, notion of liability that stops with the senior minister. And we heard from his junior minister last week, who at least made a fist of trying to do the decent thing. But said very clearly, and documents were shown, that Mr. Clark had had the final say on several of the things which were at issue, like delaying the warnings to donors about the possible risk of HIV infection, which would then get into the blood supply. Um, So, uh, as I say, it's, it's, it's expected, it's predictable. But it's actually quite embarrassing to watch him behaving with so little respect for the process, for the the very senior lawyers who've been working on this now for, what, four years, and telling, asking them why they were asking certain questions, saying he didn't see the point of certain questions. And that is actually causing a certain amount of bad feeling amongst the other people watching it. Well, Lord Clark was asked, uh, do you accept that the health department had a responsibility to ensure the treatment being provided through the National Health Service was safe? 
And Lord Clark responded, Yes, that's why we have this network of safety of medicine committees. Never does the minister personally start intervening and imposing a personal decision on what treatment the patients get. What do you think of his response? I think um, it, I, I'm, I'm prepared to accept that he had no personal dealings with the actual um, treatment, with actually what was happening. But there is this minister convention of ministerial responsibility and that it was going on in his department. And we heard last week from one of the senior civil servants and the junior minister, uh, Lord Glen Arthur, and everything that they said, which obviously they were dealing with the um, actual issues, depended on what the minister said and i think his conscience must be very much easier to think i had nothing to do with it but it's disingenuous shall we say what are the victims families hoping to achieve from the inquiry sue well we the campaign aims of uh, truth and justice and truth is that we find out who did what and why That, I think, is going to be um, very, very difficult. I I don't think we will ever know for sure why. And justice is the government to stand up and look us in the eye and say, those of us who are still surviving, look at us say, we did harm, we owe you, and compensation is not about money. It's about an act of contrition. And one of the things that um, Sir Kenneth Clark did do, which he could have avoided, he was one of the ministers who was totally opposed to paying any sort of compensation, to admitting any liability. Um, and in Steve's case, uh, he was being a multi hemophiliac. Whatever decisions they made, there were never any life-threatening in- incidences in Steve's life that needed those treatments. And in fact, the civil servant actually admitted that on last week. But to say, well, we did what we could, and I don't know anything about it anyway, it's truly shocking. The state is responsible for the deaths of at least 3,000 people, for the infection of 5,000 haemophiliacs, plus um, an unknown number of transfusion victims. And apparently it doesn't feel it has any responsibility to take. Sue Gorman, thank you for being with us.